Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Mipple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Floating Floors, a game designed by Takashi Sawada and published by Guff Studios. Let's get to the game! In Floating Floors, players are ninjas, attempting to reassemble all of the Banson seals of their colours which have been stolen and scattered around the landscape. Players will forge their own precarious paths of jutsu and floating floorboards, maneuver in stealth along spaces of their colour, and complete death-defying maneuvers to recover their seals. Floating Floors is a race, and the first player to collect all of the Banson seals matching their ninja is the winner. To set up, shuffle all of the terrain cards and then create a 2x3 grid for a 2 player game, or a 3x3 grid for a 3 or 4 player game. For your first game, all the cards should be lakeside down, that is the ones showing 8 water spaces should not be visible. Return leftovers to the box. Each player chooses one of the four ninjas, and in a two-player game you must choose different colours. Take your matching chakra and Banson seals. You'll use all four seals in a two-player game, three in a three-player game, or two in a four-player game. Choose a first player, and in clockwise order each player chooses an alcove, that is a space in the centre of one of the terrain tiles in which to place the chakra which will be their starting space. Then place the Banson seals. Start by placing the first player's Banson seal in the first alcove clockwise from their chakra, and continue filling the empty alcoves clockwise, alternating the player's Banson seals in turn order. Use the blank side of the Banson seals. The one showing the numbers is used for an advanced variant. Place all ninjas on the matching chakra. Give each player three jutsu pieces to start the game. This will be one piece in each shape in their colour. Beside play, keep all the remaining jutsu, the jutsu dice, and the floorboard cards, which should be shuffled into a pile. It does not matter which side up these cards are. You're now ready to play. Floating Floors is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. A turn is broken up in three main steps. First, you will roll the jutsu dice and then gain jutsu of those colours and shapes. Then you'll navigate the floors, and this is a phase where you can do a number of actions trying to move your ninja towards your Banson seals. This includes placing jutsu on the terrain or on the floorboards, placing floorboards onto jutsu, moving stealthily around floorboards and pieces of your colour, and finally completing manoeuvres to collect the Banson seals you've reached. Your turn ends either when you choose to stop taking actions, or when you cause a collapse of one of the tiles. You can store some leftover jutsu for next turn, and play passes to the next player. So now let's have a look at each step in more detail. The first step of any turn is to roll the three jutsu dice, and then you must take jutsu matching those dice into your supply. You can take these jutsu from three places. The general supply, from on top of a floorboard, unless it has a ninja standing on it, or from underneath a floorboard. If you do take from underneath, lift up the floorboard and then choose the piece you wish to take before replacing the floorboard where it was. If this causes a collapse, your turn is over. You can never voluntarily decline to take one of the rolled jutsu. You must take all three before proceeding. The second and major phase of your turn is navigating the floors. There are four different actions you can take during this phase. Placing a jutsu, placing a floorboard, moving your ninja, and completing the manoeuvre to claim a Banson Seal. There is no limit to the total number of actions you can take on your turn. You may take any of those four actions as often as you like, and in any order. You can also complete multiple actions at the same time, for example placing a Jutsu while moving your ninja. And this can be a useful way to manage the balance in the game. 
The only restriction is that you can't take another action at the same time as doing the Banson Seal maneuver. First is place a jutsu. Take a jutsu from your supply and place it into one of two legal places either onto a terrain card on a land space or on top of any floorboard space, matching or non-matching colour. Your jutsu may go on any tile, whether near or far from your ninja, and may be placed in any orientation. You may nudge another piece within its existing square in order to make room, as long as both pieces stay within the starting square. You may not place jutsu on a water square, straddling more than one space, on top of another jutsu, on top of a ninja, or underneath a floorboard which has previously been placed. To place a floorboard, take the top floorboard card from the deck. You may flip it over to either side, they have the reverse pattern of each other, and then place it on top of jutsu above one of the terrain tiles. The floorboard must line up correctly with the land and water beneath it. This one is okay, these two are not. You cannot place a floorboard directly on the terrain tile, on top of another floorboard, or on top of jutsu on another floorboard. To move your ninja, pick up your ninja's meeple and then move it to an orthogonally adjacent space of the same colour, or on top of a jutsu of the same colour on an orthogonally adjacent space. Your first move will be from your chakra to its adjacent space, and from then on you'll move around either within the tiles or to the adjacent space on an adjacent tile. When taking this action you may place your ninja in any orientation when finishing your movement, stand on more than one jutsu within the same space, nudge a jutsu or even another ninja around within the square of destination to give you space to fully land, and up until the point that you let go of your ninja, you can change your mind and return to its original position. You cannot step onto a terrain tile, or a jutsu on a terrain tile, step to straddle two spaces, or stand on different jutsu on different spaces, stand on top of another ninja, move more than one space without stopping and releasing your ninja to check for balance at each move, or move your ninja by sliding or dragging it across the card without clearly lifting it off at some point during the move. If your ninja is in the space adjacent to one of your Banson seals, then you may attempt to claim that seal. You must successfully complete a maneuver by rotating that floorboard 90 degrees in the direction printed on the seal. Here it would be a 90 degree rotation clockwise. If you can successfully make that rotation without the board collapsing, then pick up that seal and continue playing as the board now lies. If this was your last seal, the game is over and you win. If you cause a collapse or fall, then the attempt fails and your turn ends. Your turn ends after you choose to stop taking actions or you've caused a collapse. Either way, you may keep up to three jutsu of your colour. Any other jutsu must be returned to the common supply. If at any point on your turn you cause a piece to fall off a floorboard and hit the terrain, or you cause the edge of a floorboard to touch the terrain, then you have caused a collapse. Your turn now ends immediately. The player who is next in turn order now gets to reset this terrain card, taking all of the jutsu and ninjas that were on it, as well as the floorboard piece itself, and then rearranging them into any configuration. Generally, this will involve laying out the board to make it as difficult as possible for you, and as easy as possible for them. The final placement must be legal, that is, any ninjas must be on the correct colour of space. The rearrangement is not considered to be part of the next player's turn, and so if a collapse is caused while doing the rearrangement, that does not then trigger another penalty. Note as well that causing a ninja to fall off a jutsu onto a floorboard does not count as a collapse, 
but you must reset that action before attempting again. Once one player has collected all of their Bants and Seals, the game ends immediately and that player wins. Then, once you've mastered the basic game, you can start to challenge your skills with eight different challenges introducing new rules and difficulties at the back of the rulebook. We won't cover all of these challenges in this video, but it will include a few of the features we've seen before, including the numbered sides of the Banson Seals and the lake sides of the terrain cards. And that's how to play Floating Floors. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us, you can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so, and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, see you next time!